Hey, what's up guys? Shane here with Rice Creek Bushcraft. Um, we were out and made the video in the woods earlier today. On the, sorry, I'm trying to adjust my camera here. The Survive Knives <clears throat> GSO 4.1. Um, I've been doing some more uh, use with it today after that video. And I wanted to show you guys something um, on feather sticking that uh, maybe you've seen, maybe you haven't. It's something you can use um, if you have, if you don't have good grip strength, okay, maybe if you're older, uh, maybe you have arthritis, maybe you're a young kid, and also for kids, this is a, this is a much safer way to, at least starting out until they get the concept and use a knife, um, it's a little bit safer way for them to not have a knife directly in their hand <clears throat> to make feather sticks, and it gets them used to just being around knives and playing with them and having mom and dad watch them and make sure they're doing everything safely so um also if, if you hurt your hand and you're out in the woods let's say you and you just couldn't really hold a knife really well or if you got fatigued quick you could use this method i suppose to uh make feather sticks so you're going to stick your knife in tip down <clears throat> into a stump and you're going to have the cutting edge face them away from you so you're just going to get it started get it straight Tap it down in. Feel it, make sure it's, see, it's not sturdy enough. Right there, that's pretty sturdy. You don't have to drive it down in like a crazy amount. This will work. So, um, anyways, you drive, drive your knife into a stump like this, and then you're able to take away a lot of the mechanics that it takes to make feather sticks okay so you've got your wrist doing this type of movements and these type of movements and then this wrist doing this that's holding the wood <clears throat> so you take a lot of that away and basically what you're left with is um, to make a feather stick is either angling the wood deeper into your cut or reducing it to take more or less material so I mean real simple I like to use two hands because I can stabilize it better and be more accurate more precision with it but you're just going to draw your stick across the knife like this and also if you're just struggling with making feather sticks period this is a way you can use it um, you can you can get feathers and you don't have to worry about holding the knife or all of that you just draw it across You can see this pretty dry wood, so it's pretty it's pretty dense and tough to get through. But you can see this works pretty pretty quickly. So you got a good feather there. I mean something to catch a spark anyways. Like I said, this is a good way to um, for kids to start out so they're not actually holding the knife and taking a chance of cutting themselves badly. Um, so just something to think about might work for you or maybe you're just starting out in bushcraft and you want to make feather sticks and it's like man I just can't get this down but I want to make a fire with my own feather sticks I made but I can't do it with holding the knife well here's a way okay that you can make feather sticks that's pretty simple and it'll get you started anyways then you can use your ferro rod and make some fire so that's one way um, just a note on safety here is when you're done with this Take this knife out and don't push the knife laterally left or right, just forward and backward towards you until the knife comes out. Okay, you don't want to do this because you're going to snap your tip off. But when you're done, take this out, okay? Take it out, put it back in its sheath so it's safe. I mean, even this, just laying it back on your stump is much safer. I mean, it's going to be almost impossible to cut yourself, even if you hit this blade, okay? But if it's stuck in here like this, yeah. You could fall against it or go to reach for something, come across, hit the blade. You know, maybe you have kids around and they're playing, they could fall into it. So just be safe. At least, if nothing else, take it out of the stump so you don't have to worry about somebody getting hurt. Okay, here's another way. We'll use the same piece of cherry to make feather sticks. So you take, I don't know, let me see, how big is this? Eh, 10 inches, but it doesn't really matter. You know 10 12 13 15 whatever inch piece of wood you have available 
you're gonna drive your tip of your knife into it and it's a little hard on this log because it wants to roll and I need something to hit with what do you know it's a baton ready made awesome so just get this toward the the far end of your stick and you want something you know substantial two or three inches across like this you don't want to you know this is not going to work for this just having a little stick you need something you know it's got some decent size to it all right you get the picture so drive your knife tip in the far end just start out with one light tap okay now you got it started you can get it kind of set where you want just start driving it down in just like we did in the stump and you just don't want to go too far because you're going to split you can see it starting to split okay so just far enough then you can take this and it's basically the same principle maybe if you didn't have this you know you didn't have a good stump or something to drive your knife into then you can push the front of this down uh, you can do it in the ground or whatever but just into something so it's stable then same thing you can just draw this and you can still make feather sticks now this isn't this isn't as good you can see how the knife's it's moving back and forth okay you can hold it like this and draw it okay make feather sticks that way but basically same principle okay I prefer if I'm gonna use it um, or I was to show somebody the better way is to drive it into you know an old stump or something you have in the woods a chunk of firewood or whatever you might have available just drive this tip down in and take a piece of wood and make feathers another thing when you're making feathers whether you're doing it this way or you're just <clears throat> holding the knife like we normally would make feathers what you're doing with this I mean so there's a little bit of explanation is you're you're cutting into the wood obviously okay and then what you've just done is you made a flat spot where I just cut that's flat and you can't see it but on each side there'll be a ridge so you cut in see if we can do it far enough basically we've made a ridge on this side we want to cut that off and then one on this side then that's all you're doing you're just drawing your knife across those ridges you make when you get a piece of wood if you're struggling if you get one like this that's got a corner on each side it's a good place to start it's pretty easy to make feathers like this okay on a corner but you can still do it on the flat and I like to take my piece of wood and whether it's in the ground or it's what I have here um, a chunk of wood is put the end of your stick down okay have it against something don't just don't just try to do it like this. Now you're dealing with this wrist doing all this and this one doing the same thing. So you got two things fighting against you and that's why I think a lot of people struggle with it. If you can get this kind of where it's stationary and it's not moving around, okay, you can even lay it across your leg or your knee like this. But the main thing is get the, the far end of that down into something and then just push across. Okay, nice and slow until you until you feel that you got your knife at the correct angle. Okay, because this is ab above your cutting edge, above the bevel of the cutting edge, so it's not going to do anything. You just got to find that sweet spot. See, it's still not cutting. I'm angling more. You got to find that sweet spot until it starts to bite, and then you adjust that all the way through your cut. Really, I mean. Because if you don't, you're just going to keep digging and digging and digging a lot of times. And you're just going to get into the wood so far that you can't push through anymore. So you're, you're kind of constantly just adjusting this right here. In and out. A little bit. Just micro. And you'll feel it. And hold the knife like this. Get a good grip on it and get your fingers as close to the cutting edge as you safely can. Okay? That's where you get your accuracy. You can't hold a knife like this and hold it back here. Okay, there's too much distance. This axis makes it do this. All right, so you're gonna really struggle getting good feathers with your hand way back here. Plus you don't have the power you need. So grab the knife up as close as you safely can to the cutting edge. All right, this will, this will make it much better. Don't put your thumb on the spine of the knife. All right, 
you might do that once in a while when you're just doing something real fine. I do that, okay? Just nice, real small stuff. You can use your, but if you're really getting into it, just grab the knife right around like a baseball bat, close to the cutting edge, and just push away from you. You can even pull the stick a little bit if you'd like. But the main thing is has, have the far end of it on something. I think that'll help you get started. Then you can do it where you, you know, you don't need to do that. You get the hang of it and you can just make feathers no matter what. But when you're just starting out, this is kind of a little beginner helper, I think. Keep it there and then just twist your stick as you go. Just twist it. Okay, I'm just twisting around. I'm getting, cutting all my ridges off that I make. So that's basically it, guys. I just wanted to show you that. Plus it gives me an excuse to use this knife again for something cool. Um, so if you're, you're, like I said, if you're having problems with your grip strength or you're just starting out, you can drive your blade down into something, to a piece of wood, and like a draw knife, basically, that'll help you. You can use the other method, like this. I don't like that as much. It You can do it, but it doesn't work quite as well. This method works well. And then when you move on and you start using... Your knife in your hand okay like i said just push and turn and cut those ridges off just keep going around and cutting them off and it just takes practice i mean it's not rocket science but if you go out and try it one time you're like oh, i can't do this you know this sucks well it's like anything else it's gonna take some practice you're not gonna do it your first time or two but try it a few times you'll get to where you can consistently make them with most wood and some wood's tougher than others. I mean, don't get discouraged if you grab a piece of wood and you can't make it. I got pieces of wood here, red oak and stuff, that I'd be damned if I could make a good feather stick with it. <clears throat> like this right here. I haven't even tried this. I can tell you it's going to be hard to make a feather stick with this. Okay? It's super hard, dense wood. And it's going to hard. It's going to be hard to get curls off it. But if you practice enough, you can do it with most pieces of wood you find in the woods. But, see, I'm struggling, and I knew I would, because I know different types of wood and how it acts. You know, you get cherry is a little bit softer wood. Plus, if you're smart and you start out on a corner, okay, don't try to make a feather stick on a big flat spot. It's not going to happen. That's all you're going to do. So you got to get on the corner, okay? Pick a corner, and you can see this has some waves in it. The straighter it is with the least amount of waves, the easier it's going to be. So what's going to happen is you're going to be cutting along, you're going to get in this valley, it's going to dig deep. Okay, then it's going to want to come out, your knife's going to want to move back out. So even sometimes you just start out just kind of square it up a little bit. Just like this. Take off some of the high spots, give yourself a little bit straighter edge, and you'll find you can make better feather sticks. So start right on the corner. Okay, I just made a nice flat spot right here, you can see it. Now I can come to the left or the right of that and cut the ridge off it. Make a feather here. One here, another one here. I'm constantly making ridges and I'm constantly cutting them off. They're small and they're hard to see, but, <clears throat> excuse me, you practice enough, you'll be able to find them. All right, there's a pretty tough spot. You can see that was a high spot and that's what I'm talking about. That's what you'll run into. So just practice it. You'll get it. You'll get good at it. it takes time. Well, anyways, there's a couple different ways to make feather sticks. Uh, a couple ways to show you how to start off if you're struggling with it because you're out in the woods and you want to make one and you want to try your ferro rod and see if you can catch a spark on these feathers. All right, when you get done, if you have smaller sticks that you've made feather sticks out of, you can just keep those and throw them in the fire. Or if you if you don't have anything for good tinder, just cut these right off, the ones that you've made. Cut all that stuff off. Like that. Then, kind of gather them up. Give yourself a nice little bundle of uh, tinder here to throw a spark into. Alright. So there's a little one-on-one -on, -one on feather sticking. It's, like I said, it's not like it's a, a big uh, deal to make them. But I think people just try it and they, oh, I can't do it. And they get discouraged. Just keep practicing it. You'll get good at it. Then you can move on to getting better at making your fires and, you know, the different levels of material that you need. So, like, this is level one at best. 
you've got to get this to catch a spark. Better yet would be maybe some birch bark crumpled up or some dry grasses. Okay, that's going to catch a little bit better than solid piece of wood, but this, this will catch <clears throat> with a ferro rod, I promise it, as long as it's dry. So then you've got to move on. You know, you're, you've got your feathers sticking down, that's great. Then you've got to move on to making stuff, you know, much smaller than this. I'll kind of show you what I mean. Okay, to catch, to catch a flame off a feather stick, which is not producing a whole lot of heat, right? You need stuff about this size. You see that's pretty thin. I can easily snap it, okay? And I would probably even take this piece, and I'd split this again. And you don't need a baton to do these little pieces. You just hit it with your hand a little bit. So, like, this is basically your next level. That's going to that's gonna burn a little bit hotter and a little bit longer. And you need that so that you can gradually move up into pieces, you know. So you got some like this. Then you're going to have some pieces this size. Then you can probably move right up to this. And after this, this. And then you're good. Once you get stuff like this going, you can throw on bigger pieces and then whatever. So start with your feather stick and get that down. Get uh, your ferro rod and see if you can get this stuff to catch. And then work on your fire lay. So, thanks for joining me. Thanks for watching. Uh, leave comments in there if you want to. If you don't, don't. This is Shane, Rice Creek Bushcraft. Thanks, guys.